good morning friends once again once again i am came for the classes for class 7 last episode i already inform you that the first lesson from the history we will like learn a uh, two episode then first episode we already discussed and we learned so many thing especially we learned the continuity and change and also we the changing names of the land and the religious developments and this are the uh, topic we completed by the last classes and this is the seventh class uh, second episode and with the rest of the half of the part we are going to discuss uh, from uh, today now just uh, we want to know about uh, the briefly information i am giving about the last class maybe we discussed about the last topic changing names of the land and india's name how now we are calling the india or otherwise bharat how that name came to abi in india about that we learned so maybe the last class we discuss uh, maybe in uh, early sanskrit text that mentioned about uh, aryabhat aryavarta and uh, during the era of the puranas that name came to hindu or hindustan during the era of the persians and uh, that may, many of hindu means indo aryans otherwise sind and uh, stan means land so during the era of the persians the hindustan that name came for our india and let me understand that bharat or india that name in sanskrit literature we came to know about the uh, bharat or india this are them so our nation name are uh, maybe from uh, sind to maybe the a uh, india otherwise the bharat and uh, maybe there are so many changes are there in persian uh, time in the uh, era of the puranas and the sanskrit literature that came Th this is what we completed the last class now we have to go ahead especially how maybe the there are the sources came to india about the historical uh, period especially 700 to 1800 these are the periods and uh, how we are uh, uh, able to write how we are able to know about the india and uh, which are the sources was available to know about uh, bharat or india so we are going to learn about those uh, topic uh, today that's a uh, uh, half part of uh, this uh, same lesson lesson one then uh, we only discuss the lesson name is uh, when or where and how and uh, now today we are going to discuss about the sources maybe sources mainly we can understand that from which are the sources we now we are uh, we are learning the history of india the sources are different two different are there first one literary sources are there and from the literary sources we are getting so many information about india so from the literary sources we can understand that maybe how now we are calling the india now we are calling the bharat how the name came and what are the changes what are the historical what are the economical what are the religious and what are the social changes that occurred in india about that we are getting information from the sources so the sources are divided into two part the first of all, first one i am going to, uh, to explain about the literary sources from the court chronicles are there memoirs and autobiographies are there and accounts of the travelers are there and uh, regional literatures are there and uh, religious literatures are there and uh, calligraphy and ar archival record this sort of thing we can see from the this are the parts so you just listen i will explain very clearly one by one and uh, briefly i will give the explanation and uh, while we are going through the books you will get more information about uh, our lesson so regional literature we can understand that maybe so many writings are there maybe regional literature and uh, we can understand that this uh, literature source also the second part and the first one i am going to discuss about the source of the uh, history that is uh, literary sources there uh, we can understand that court chronicles you know that the early time the historians they came to stay with uh, so many dynasties kings and the kingdom and they experienced so many things from there and uh, they used to write their own chronicle that means day to day affairs they used to write and that is became one of the source of indian history 
you uh, what say I will repeat the court of chronicles means maybe the history from abroad from different parts of the India and from abroad they came to India and they used to stay with the kings and the kingdoms and any dynasties and they are, they are learning about their culture the economical uh, uh, things and maybe the social things and everything they are learning about that and they are making their own sources as evidence these evidence are one of the sources for our uh, history that's very clear so the court chronicles we can understand that first one is the court chronicles all right You know that the court chronicles about that. I have given the explanation. Now, from the uh, source of the history, we are going to learn about the uh, about the maybe the memoirs and autobiographies. You know that here mentioned that so many historians they stayed in uh, every dynasties, and the memoirs and life historians written by rulers themselves are important sources of the information of the period. You know that. So many people, information we are getting, they stayed in the dynasties and uh, they are writing their own chronicles. Through the chronicles, we are learning about our own India. That's the chronicles. You know that uh, Babur wrote about Babur Nama and maybe the Jahangir, one of the autobiographies there. And also Humun Nama, Humun wrote the Humun Nama. These are the things we are getting the autobiographies. So these are the autobiographies around the uh, people, the historians. From there, we are getting information about the source of our own history. That is, the uh, second one is the uh, uh, autobiographies. You know that biography means uh, somebody writing about someone else after the death, and before that, somebody is writing someone's history, that's called biography. And here we can understand that there is autobiography. That means somebody is writing about them, uh, that particular person sir. For some, I am writing about my, about me. That is called autobiography. So, so many kings they are all, they are all, all the history, they are all chronicles, they, they are all day to day affairs they are writing. That will come under the, their own chronicles. So, the, uh, uh, that will come under uh, their own autobiographies. So, you know that these are the autobiographies giving us sources. Otherwise, the evidence for our own history. Now, we have to understand about the accounts of the travelers. So, listen now here. Here mentioned that accounts of the travelers. We know that we are getting the information about the culture chronicles and maybe the, the kings there on autobiographies. And we are getting information of the sources about the accounts of the travelers. You know that so many travelers, maybe according to their own time, 1018, that medieval period came to India and uh, their travel history they wrote it. I have so many examples here while, while you are reading your test too, you get so many examples about that. That here mentioned that maybe the, uh, these travelers sometimes also visited the course of the kings. The travelers coming, sometimes they are visiting the courts, sometimes they are staying in the courts and they are learning about the, what are the affairs happening, what are the things that are happening over there and they are writing their, their own history. So this history also helping to understand the source of the history. So then we are going ahead, we can understand that maybe so many examples given here. So uh, Mahmud of the Ghazni and 11th century and uh, wrote extensively about Indian people in his books. And uh, the Haki I hint, some well known foreign travelers who visited India during the medieval period Ivan Baduda of Morocco, Nicola Conti of Italy, uh, Abdul Rasa of Persia. These are the so many historians came to India, the sometimes they strayed in the court and they used to write about their own history, what are things they learning from there, that is one of the sources of our own India. Now we have to go for the, some more sources that go called regional literature.
Okay, now we read three things and uh, the four things we are going to learn uh, regional uh, literature. What do you mean by really, uh, regional literature? So here mentioned that there are some of, so many poems are there, stories are there, dramas are there, also help to reconstruct the life and times of the age. You know that? Here very clearly says that so many people there wrote so many poems are there, and so many stories are there, and also so many dramas are there. So while we are reading the stories, others the dramas, while we are uh, 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 go through the, maybe the uh, poems are there, we are able to understand the, about the, those things. That's the history. So that's one of the source for us. Here are so many examples that are also mentioned here. And uh, Jayadavas, Gita Govindam, Chant Bhardiyas, okay, uh, Prithviraj Arso, Arbox, Kandanaga Poets, and Pampa and Vasubanna. These are the so many uh, uh, people, they wrote their own stories and dramas and maybe especially even poems are there. These are the things we are getting that will come under the or religious or regional literature. From there we are getting the history of uh, India. That's one of the sources for us. And uh, now you have to go again for one more point that's religious literature. So we learned four uh, points are there. Now we have to learn about the fifth point religious uh, literature. What is the religious literature? You know that during this period, I already explained in the first class that maybe Sufism and Islam, so many religions also came in India. And while the people came abroad, they already started their own, uh, they already brought their own religion in India. So we understand that Sufism also came to India, and uh, Buddhism also came to India, and also Islam religion also came to India. These are the different religions also came to India. And uh, what we have to learn from the sources about the religious literature? That's very clearly said that during this period, Bhakti and Sufi movement became popular. You know that already explained the first class about the Bhakti movement and also about the uh, Sufi movements are there. So many revival people are there about their own religion. They are having the songs, they have the different petitions towards their God. They used to clap their hand, they are singing songs towards their God and revivally they already changed and they have a particular group of people uh, together. They used to worship their own God. That's all, almost that's coming from the Islam only, that's the Sufism. So these are the people, there are so many songs are there. And uh, from this also we are getting information about the history. The, this is one of the source of the history. That is the religious literature. Now we have to go ahead once again. And maybe the five, the fifth point we already completed. And maybe next one I will explain here. You listen carefully. And uh, choreography. Okay, what do you mean by choreography? Here, Goligraphy mentioned that many of the handwritten manuscripts and in the medieval period were, uh, were written and beautifully decorated. You know that Goligraphy means so many people have written many manuscripts are there and uh, that was beautifully decorated. And this kind of uh, decorative writing, writing is called Goligraphy. You know that very clearly says so many people wrote so many things and beautifully decorated so many writings are there. These type of writings are called uh, what I said, that's the choreography. So, that time also, so many people wrote, even the different people, they came abroad to India, those people, their own language, decorated uh, uh, letters, they wrote it, that is called the choreography. So, from that also, we are getting the sources about our own history. So, so many examples, that is mentioned mainly, we can understand that, this choreography, uh, we can see, and the uh, ancient, uh, maybe the pillars are there, the tombs are there, and decorated monuments are there. I uh, you know the people are funerals then people they are making the monuments that monuments also they are writing very systematically decoratively this is called uh, choreography so choreography we found in monuments and pillars and the tombs are there these are the maybe the sources uh, about the choreography now we have to go for the next sources that's called the archaeological sources so uh, this is the mainly, I already informed you that we are going to learn about the sources, first words are literature, liter, uh, literary sources and secondly we are going about the, uh, learning about the archaeological sources. So the literary sources almost will be over, that is the uh, first one is the uh, Gothic Chronicles and second one is the, um, uh, second one is the autobiographies and the third one is called Accords of the Travelers and the fourth one is called uh, Regional Literature. 
And the fifth one is called um, religious literature, and this is called uh, choreographic. These are the papers I have given. The first part mainly talking about the sources about the literary that uh, very clearly explained. And while you are reading uh, uh, again and again, you will get more information about uh, this uh, uh, source of the history. First part, the literary sources. That is explained. Now we have to go for the uh, second sources that is called uh, archaeological sources. Archaeological sources. First uh, sources evidence we are getting, that's the literary sources, that's the poets have already mentioned. Now we have to learn about the archaeological uh, sources. What are the archaeological sources we have? So here we can understand that. Maybe we know that archaeology deals with the uh, material remain and uh, of the past civilizations. So the material remain from the past, that's will come the archaeology. And you know that maybe there are so, uh, so many examples I can give you. Maybe archaeological uh, inscription that we can understand. Coins are there. Pottery is there. Jewelry is there. Toys are there. Statues are there. Ruins of the old building. This all will come under the archaeological sources. Now I am talking about the archaeology. The second part, the first part we discuss about the literary sources and second part archaeological sources. And we have to understand that what are the examples for the archaeological sources that will come under the coins, poetry, jewelry, toys, statues, ruins of the old buildings. These are the examples of the archaeological, archaeological sources. So, first of all, we have to learn about the archaeology, which are the things will come under the archaeological sources. First one is called inscriptions. Okay, first one is called inscriptions. So inscription, what I think we have to learn about the inscription? You know, it is mentioned that mainly we can discuss about the epigraphy. Epigraphy means the study of the inscription is called epigraphy. The simple definition I am giving, the study of the inscription is called epigraphy. So the epigraphy also very clearly we can understand that the record of the uh, uh, achievements of the rulers, royal proclamations and gifts made with the kings to the temples villages and scholars. So these are the examples. Maybe the records of the achievements of rulers, our royal proclamations are there and achievements, you know that oh, so many kings are there, so many dynasty people, they have their own achievements are there. So all the achievements will come under the inscriptions. That's uh, we have to understand. So and the uh, royal proclamations are there, gift made with the kings to the temples and the people, this all will come under the, this uh, especially about inscription. That's the uh, first source. Now we have to go for the monuments. So point number two, maybe the second part is monuments. Okay, we are learning about the monuments. So maybe the archaeological sources we learned about first one is the inscriptions and point number two that's called the monuments. You know that monuments I already given the examples and the beautiful palace and forge, temples, mosques, tombs and other buildings of the medieval period all tells us about the architecture styles. You know these all, through these all the buildings and we can understand that we are getting very very good architectural styles. So you know these are the examples, the monuments example, maybe the building, so many buildings we can see while we are uh, traveling through the India, so many places where the dynasties are available, these are the areas where we are going, so many very good buildings are there, even still the 21st century we are unable to make such a of buildings already made on oh, that, uh, that means uh, 1800, at uh, this time see they made it, these are the monuments. So 
this building also giving a very good examples of our own history that's very clear so while we are traveling when you are getting maybe a chance to maybe travel and visit these are the places you go and visit and you will get a very good idea about these are the buildings these are the monuments are there so this all giving a very good idea about the history of the sources okay so you we are learning about the sources so first of all we are discussing about so many people things are there now we are learning about the monument this the monument also we are getting very good examples of the history of our india and i will give a few example for that the first one is called you know the uh, the red fort and the jama masjid of delhi and also the taj mahal in agra uh, brindeshwara temple in tanjavur the hawa mahal in jaipur and the fort of the jaisalmer and gwalior also very famous you know that taj mahal every people knows about the taj mahal and red fort these are the main main buildings are the even the monuments of these people dynasty people are there these are giving a very good fantastic history for our india now that's uh, these are the some while you are reading you will get a more uh, explanation about all those things now we got to go for the next uh, topic numismatics Numismatics means mainly we have to understand that that the study of the coin is called numismatics. Numismatics is the what is the meaning of this? Uh, the study of the coin. You know that uh, even those people they started their own dynasty in India and for the you know, trading purpose they have made their own coin and there are so many purpose of, uh, that uh, is there for making their own coins and even for uh, for the business transactions. So you know that. This uh, numismatics is also giving a very good idea or very good example for the history of our India because he has mentioned that the return of the coin gives us the names of the king or queens. You know that so many coins while we are taking and seeing year will be there, date will be there, and photos of the king and queens are over there. These are the uh, things coins while we are seeing we can understand that the history of those days. So the numismatics, otherwise the coins. This also giving the history of our India. So we are learning the sources of our history, and we can understand that this numerous masti also are giving a very good source of our history. Then we can understand that there are so many next point sculptures and paintings are there. Okay, here we are going to learn about the maybe the uh, fourth point, sculptures and uh, the paintings. You know that maybe there are so many uh, uh, many beautiful paintings and uh, sculptures and belongs to the medieval period. The sculptures are mostly figures of king, queen, gods and goddesses and were made on bronze. Here we are getting information that maybe we are getting a uh, uh, sculptures, otherwise the paintings are there, the old paintings are there, even those thousands are there, those people already painted. And uh, that uh, mainly the figures of the king, queen, god, and goddesses. I uh, you know that maybe the most uh, famous sculptures were uh, Chola bronze, for example, the dancing Shiva. That everybody knows. And maybe the, you are learning about the maybe the fifth class on base about the uh, uh, standing, otherwise the dancing Shiva that you understand. That's made in bronze uh, by Chola kings. So these are the information painting the sculptures while we are seeing. And we are able to get the maybe the history of the maybe history. That's the source of the history for our India. That's very clearly we are we are getting information. Now we have to go ahead that uh, uh, so many mythological painting also there are various themes such as uh, court scenes, palace scenes, and mythological tales and hunting scenes. So many painting we can understand that that painting also uh, shows the example is that court scene. The uh, how the court is function about that they get they are uh, painting the scenes. And also a palace scene. In the palace, what are the, the dynasty, the king's palace, what are things are happening? What are things where are here? Where is the throne place? Where the court is there? And all paintings are already made the people. And also uh, mythological uh, tales are there. 
hunting scenes are there you know people are hunting in the forest hunting to the uh, animals about that scene also they uh, painted so the paintings and the sculptures are there when just like the shiva dancing shiva the sculptures and everything we are uh, you know, giving us uh, for the examples of the so many histories of our india so that's the thing and now we have to go to the last point about the oral tradition oral tradition so the last point is oral oral traditions so what is the oral tradition because orally because uh, so many other things are literally we are having but oral means only orally and uh, what we are talking about and maybe the uh, traditionally uh, maybe transformed oral stories are the tales are you know that our grandparents before their parents these people are they are having their own stories about the particular their own culture and everything so they are just uh, uh, given to the, their own parents and that parents will give their own children like that automatically hand over the stories are there that is called oral traditions he has mentioned that oral tradition such as mythology and legends are a valuable source of information for the historians you know we are getting the information about the grandparents and uh, uh, we have when we have the children we are giving that same story to our own children that automatically they are giving a uh, changing uh, maybe the generation to the generation such kind of so many stories are there this uh, oral tradition so this also giving me more information about our own history so that's uh, this lesson is going, uh, going to be over so uh, i just want to by the once again i would like to say but saying that we learned so many thing from this uh, uh, this lessons first of all we learned about the uh, continuity and changes and uh, we learned maybe the changing the na name of the law uh, lands then uh, we learned the source of the history so uh, so history is divided source of history divided into two first one is called uh, let, uh, literary sources and second one is called uh, archaeological sources so you know that the literary literary sources very clearly says that maybe the corpus chronicles are there auto biographies are there and the accounts of the uh, kings and the regional literary is there or religious literary is there that all will come under the uh, uh, literary sources and uh, point number 2 we discuss about the archaeological sources archaeological sources also inscriptions are there and monuments are there numismatics are there and uh, sculptures and paintings are there and oral traditions are there these are the uh, five points also there so from this uh, all the literary sources and uh, archaeological sources we are getting a clear picture about our indian history so uh, now i am like to bind up my my um, uh, teaching uh, right now here because uh, we learned this uh, completely and uh, you i uh, just insist you that you have read again and again and uh, while you are reading or uh, you keep a dictionary with you and uh, which are the maybe the uh, uh, words are not not familiar to you go through the dictionary and find out the meaning and learn it properly so i would like to give few homework for so today and may be not test to how many of you have the test to and you open maybe the uh, test to the last part there will be so many uh, questions are mentioned and objective questions are uh, mentioned there you read the test book uh, write it down all the uh, objective type questions and uh, the questions are longer short answers will be there and uh, while you read the test book uh, try to write the answer also so and uh, now we completed this lesson uh, totally the first exercise is over now your time is there you have to learn you go to the and uh, uh, dictionaries and go to the test book again and again and try to learn very clearly okay may god bless you all thank you thank you very much